Uh, my name is Pradeep Padala. Uh, I'm in the Cisco container team. Um, and uh, uh, we've been working on containers and a project called Contiv. Um, I know I'm, I'm the one sitting between you and the uh, evening party. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm going to make it quick and uh, sweet. Uh, there are only a few slides. Uh, I want to show you a quick demo of like what Contiv is and what container networking is and talk about that. Uh, so before I start, how many of you know about containers? Everyone. Awesome. So I don't need to do introduction to containers. right? <laughs> how many know about Contiv? Just learning? Good. Go to contiv.github.io while I'm going to talk about some other things. Uh, so, so that is how, uh, so I'm going to introduce what, what is Contiv. And let's look at the very quickly the agenda as well. So introduction to containers, all of you guys know. We'll go through that very quickly. And I'm going to introduce Contiv project, uh, which allows you to do container networking. And, uh, uh, and I show like what is it, right? What does actually container networking mean? And then end with a demo. So also, like a quick intro about me. Um, I come from a company called ContainerX. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard. Uh, Cisco acquired us about six months ago. I was one of the founders and the CTO for ContainerX. Uh, so at ContainerX, we actually built a container platform. And I'll give a little bit of a glimpse of that as well. Uh, but this talk is about Contiv, uh, which is a project started within Cisco. And now it's all under the same team. All right. So introduction to containers, you guys have seen a version of this many times. Uh, so we are moving away from monolithic applications to running on bare metal to VMs, and now going towards running in containers. Uh, and there are many benefits of that. Uh, so you can break a large application into different pieces. Uh, portability is there. You can run it on different uh, private and public cloud the same way. And packaging, of course. Uh, you can package all your application dependencies in one way. Okay. And uh, uh, containers are helping do that agile development where you go from test and dev to staging to production very quickly. Uh, so that's one of the ways containers started. And you guys have seen a version of this slide many times as well. But what are the concerns that administrators have uh, so this is more. So containers have taken shape in from the developer world, but for the IT admin or the network admin, where Cisco serves all of you guys, right? Like how? What are the diff top concerns? Uh, so may, so we, this is a uh, IDC survey that is done uh, that talks about like different aspects of container uh, containers and what are the top concerns for containers. Security is a big one. Uh, and then networking. So when I say networking, it's not about like how do I connect two containers, right? It's also about how you do network compliance. Oh. Okay, it's better. Yeah. So when I say networking, uh, it's not just about connecting two containers. How do you actually do compliance and the network security, and then how can you apply network policies consistently across private and public cloud and so on? Performance, integration, management, there are other concerns which we don't get too much into in this, uh, in this talk. Uh, but the top thing, security and networking, is what Contiv is trying to uh, solve. So the, need, the, bi the big need for container ecosystem is that we need production-grade infrastructure. Uh, many of the technologies like Docker, Kubernetes, they're very, very early. Uh, they're still like two, three years old and mostly used by developers and haven't been in production use cases. Uh, so how do you run containers, production containers, or production apps in containers on a production grade infrastructure? So, so that's, what, that's where Conti will help you. So why Conti? Right? Uh, so if you look at today's infrastructure needs, there are these two personas. And they are, in, in maybe like five years ago, these two worlds were completely separate where developers lived in their own world, IT and network admins and administrators sort of lived in a different world. But those, that gap is shrinking. Because developers want to have, like a developer like Sally, she wants to develop very quickly, test it very quickly, and doesn't really care about like compliance and all of that stuff. Right? 
Uh, on the other hand, Mike, the IT admin, wants to manage the infrastructure, provide a stable infrastructure for not just one person, one developer, but multiple developers, right? So they like, uh, they want isolation, they want to make sure that policies are applied, they want to make sure that the applications can run in private and public cloud, the connectivity and so on. The challenge is that like, these two are conflicting, right? You want to move fast, you being the developer, but IT admin is like, hey, I want to make sure that you are compliant, right? So how do you achieve that? Right? So that is where Conti comes in. And Conti, if you have to describe it in one sentence, it is policy-based container networking. Right? So you are, you're running your containers, and you being developer running the containers, but from the back end, IT admin can set policies for those containers. Also, feel free to interrupt me. This is interactive. Any questions, comments? Anything so far? Good? All right. So what, is, what exactly is Contiv? Right? So Contiv is a, a platform, a network platform, that allows you to specify two things. Those two are two personas, right? Developer as well as IT admin. So the first one is application intent. Right? I want to just deploy uh, Sally as a developer. She wants to just deploy the application. So she has uh, a Docker Compose file, which is a way of like deploying Docker applications, or, or like a Kubernetes pod spec. And uh, she wants to just deploy that on the infrastructure. On the other hand, the admins want to set some policies. Uh, they want to set, like, let's say, security policy. Uh, and they want to set, let's say, some bandwidth limits on how much a specific container or a group of containers can use. Uh, now, Contiv gives you this ability, and also it's fully open source, and, uh, um, and it en enforces this across your infrastructure uh, for all your containers. And it works both in private and public cloud as well. So, so just to get, get into a little bit of detail of application intent and operational intent, right? I'm going to show you a demo where this becomes much clearer. Uh, so this is an example compose file, which is used to specify uh, which is used to deploy Docker applications. Uh, so the Compose file consists of like various things where you can specify different tiers of your application. Uh, so in this example, you have two tiers, uh, web, you can see here, and database. And then you can specify the image for these tiers. Uh, for database, it's MySQL image. For web, uh, actually, the image is not specified, but in the full file, you can see that. Now, for a... For a developer, all they are specifying is the different networks that they should be connected to. Right? And they don't really care about what policies need to be applied for those networks. Now, how does an IT admin specify those policies? That's where this second part comes in. So here, for each tier or each network, uh, you can specify certain policies. For example, in this case, the bandwidth limit, you can specify that, hey, for web tier, the total bandwidth limit is 5 Gbps. Right. Now, uh, it's not just about one container. The web tier could be running like a multiple containers that are scaled within that tier. Uh, let's say 5 to 10 containers working together in the web tier. Right. Similarly, database, uh, the port that MySQL is listening is 3306. Now, you want to isolate, let's say, multiple copies of these applications. Right? Let's say two people are running the same web and database, web and database. But you want to make sure that the tenant, one tenant's uh, database is isolated from the other tenant's database. So that is what this uh, LO policy says, that the database tier of a specific tenant can only be reached from the application tier or web tier of the, that, that tenant. So that's, that's really important. So multi-tenancy is something that administrators care about, and you want to make sure that you can use, you can set those policies and enforce them, All right? So how does, how does this work? Uh, so, in, so this kind of shows the like a uh, somewhat uh, simplified architecture or layers within Contiv. So at the bottom, you have the infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure could be like a traditional, uh, typical network infrastructure, or you could be using something like ACI, where you have programmable infrastructure as well and compute UCS or other boxes you could use. Now, on each host, Conti runs a plugin that interacts with the orchestration. 
Uh, so if you look at the container orchestration, Docker and Kubernetes, on each host, the pl network net plugin, as we call it, Contest net plugin, talks to Docker and Kubernetes and makes sure that the policies are applied. Now, the key component of that is that this is distributed. Uh, it's not just on one host. Uh, it's on all the hosts that you, you have in your cluster. And the application scheduler, Kubernetes, and Docker are the most popular ones, but we support OpenShift. And Nomad is another one that other people are using. And finally, like again, the two personas come in. For the developer, they can just use their compose file and pod spec and then deploy their app. And for the admin, they, would, they can apply the policies. Okay? So just to give a quick summary of what, what all the things Conti provides. Uh, so you, might, you, have seen, you might have seen many different container networking solutions, or even like in the ecosystem, uh, the overall container platforms and all is like exploding. Right? There's a lot of confusion as well. But Contiv is unique in the sense that uh, it's 100% it's open source, but it is production ready. Uh, and Cisco is fully behind it and would provide you like, with support and other services that, that you need to deploy it in production data centers. In fact, some of our customers are already deploying it in production uh, infrastructure as well. The other part is that it works uh, across uh, your any network infrastructure and however you set it up. Whether you set it up with L2 mode, just using VLANs, or L3 with using BGP, or if you have programmable infrastructure like ACI, uh, it would all work. And especially for public cloud, you can set up like overlay using VXLAN. Uh, or even in the private cloud, if you want to do, uh, enable some is isolation with VXLAN, that would work too. And, and of course, the rich policies is where uh, Contiv's power comes in. All right. So, um, when, when the project, Conti project started, like we had all these different features of like networking, uh, but we also had to make it more production ready, where you can have rule-based access control, user management, a, a UI that you can easily, uh, that you can interact with and easily set up policies. Uh, so that is something that we've done in the last six months, and we've been working really hard to make it production ready. Uh, and uh, I mentioned this already, that uh, the orchestration and whichever you choose, whether Docker Swarm is your preferred choice or Kubernetes, uh, Conti would work with that. And if you wanted to switch from one to the other, that also would work. Uh, and OpenShift is, uh, is a uh, platform coming from Red Hat that is built on top of Kubernetes, and we support that too. And we already talked about the policy aspect. Uh, okay. uh, in terms of the integration, uh, we have the integration with ACI where you can, if you have the ACI infrastructure, you might be familiar with like APIC. Uh, how many of you have like ACI in your, right? Quite a few. Yeah. So if you look at ACI infrastructure, right, it, it's very powerful, but it's also complex to manage. Right? You had to go to the ACI UI or maybe through API, and then you set all these tenants, endpoint groups, and set these policies, uh, which essentially are like security groups, right? Uh, so what Contiv does is to make it easier to do that. Uh, so you go to Contiv UI and then specify a top level, higher level policy. Let's say an AWS style security group. And then that gets translated into the right, right objects within ACI. And then uh, it also, uh, so in terms of containers, containers come and go very in a dynamic fashion. So you can't just create a static rule and epic and forget about it, right? Uh, that's where, again, Contiv is very beneficial that it's going to set the, all those rules in Epic based on how containers are getting started, stopped, or maybe even migrated and running in different hosts. Yeah. And of course, we support the existing like Nexus uh, um, family of switches as well. Right? So, uh, so we, we introduced Conti 1.0 like on Tuesday, and some of you might have seen the announcement. Um, so just to summarize, uh, Contiv is fully 100% open source, and, but it's, it's a production-ready container networking for your infrastructure. And it would work on any backend, any infrastructure, and you can set it up in different modes as well. Yeah. And this is actually talking about some of the new things we have done in the last six months. Uh, so we have added Kubernetes support. Uh, I already talked about the role-based access control and how we integrate with LDAP and uh, OpenShift as well. Uh, and most importantly, it's super easy to install. Uh, I'm going to show you very quickly how, how easy it is to install. Right? And uh, 
and you can get full professional support from Cisco on, on this project as well. Right? Any questions, comments before I go to demo? All right. All right. So I'm going to switch to my terminal. Before I go there. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh, so this is the website that has all the Conti information. So conti.github.io. I mean, you guys can go to it, go and browse through it. And it's been fully updated for 1.0. And it has various resources on getting set up, installing for your Docker and Kubernetes, and so on. And it's super easy to follow. Uh, so what I'm going to do is like go to one of the tutorials and go through examples of like different policies that you can set up with Conti. Right? So to, if you are following with me, then actually you should go to the install guide. Uh, so this is in the Conti sla slash install. And you can go to the GitHub and Conti slash install and follow the quick start guide. And, and the steps are actually pretty simple. Once you install VirtualBox and Vagrant and Docker, which I already have, and then all you can do, all you have to do is just to make demo swarm or Kubernetes. So what this does is that it will set up a few VirtualBox VMs, uh, two VMs in this case, and then it will install swarm or Kubernetes based on whether you choose this, this option or this option. And then you can start playing with it on your laptop. You don't need any uh, physical infrastructure. You, just, you can run it on your Linux or Mac. So I'm going to do that. And let me, OK. So I have already did the Git clone and also ran the make demo swarm. So I have two VMs running in my virtual box. Uh, so Conti, as I mentioned earlier, it said, it works in a distributed fashion. Right? We have only two nodes, but if you were to have more nodes, all the ag agents on each of those hosts talk to each other and form, uh, form a distributed system. Right? So the, one of the nodes is the master, uh, which is where you can run all your, um, all your uh, the setting of the policies and other commands. Right? All right. So I have that. So Vagrant, uh, if you're not familiar with it, Vagrant is a tool that allows you to like, spin up VMs very easily uh, just by specifying a configuration file. So we use Vagrant as an automation tool to set up this demo. Uh, and right now, the status is showing that these two VMs are running. Right? And I can log into those VMs. Let me start with the first one. Okay. All right. And here, the utility so command uh, the continuous command line utility is already installed and it's called net cuttle or net control and you can start uh, specifying networks and policies and so on right so i just did ls for the networks uh, which gives you the list of networks that you have so when you ran make demo swarm we already created a default network for you and you're you're actually ready to start running containers so what i'm going to do is go through this policy example. So we already did step one, uh, the Vagrant setup. And I also downloaded a few, so, uh, few pieces of software from Conti that you need for this demo. And then you, I showed you the compose file, right? Uh, so that compose file has two web and uh, database tier. So for this demo, we actually created a few container images to make it easier for you to run. Uh, and and you can do that by just saying docker pull. Uh, let me make this a little larger. Yeah. So docker, uh, some of you might be already familiar with. Uh, so docker allows you to pull these container images and run it very easily. Right? A container image contains all the, like the base image, let's say Ubuntu or Red Hat and so on. Also, it contains the application binaries, in this case, uh, like Redis and, and so on. And then the libraries, all packaged into one image. Right. So you pull those images, and I did that as well. Now you are ready to start creating networks. So I'm going to show this live. Hopefully, things work. Right. Right. 
So, so what I just did is that so I using the netcuttle utility, I created a network, and it is as simple as that. Uh, so you just have to specify the the full subnet and uh, the subnet prefix and how and how you want to set up the network. There are other options. Let's say you want to specify a gateway for this subnet that you can do, uh, and and more uh, more things that you can set up. And the pre-step before this is that the infrastructure setup, which uh, the demo, uh, the make demo swarm actually automatically sets it up in the VXLAN mode, right? So you can you can see all that in. Oops, let me. Oops, sorry. Netcuddle. Yeah, sorry. So this already was set up that where we set it up in a bridge mode and also like we already set up the VXLAN. Uh, so this is the very first step that is done after Conte is installed. And it is as simple as that. You just choose like four or five different options and you are set. Similarly for ACI, if you are choosing, all you have to say that, hey, I want to run my infrastructure in ACI with using ACI. And then you have to provide ACI credentials so that Conte can talk to ACI's Epic and then program the, program the ACI as well. All right. So going back to the demo, so I created this dev. And if I do, and now I see the dev network. And now it's time to actually run the application. Right? So I have. All right. So I have an example app. So let me walk through this very quickly before I run the app. So this is the same app I explained earlier, uh, that you have two tiers, web and Redis. Web image is a, it's also the web image, which is derived from Nginx. And then Redis is directly using the Redis image. Right? And let me actually, so this is the, let me first remove this one. So this is the original Compose app. Right? So this is the original Compose file that contains the app. And it doesn't specify any networks. But I can start running this right away. So I actually use a tool called Contiv Compose, which works exactly like Docker Compose. It just, we just made a few en enhancements. And I do T. Right? Hmm. Whoa. OK, sorry. So actually, after my install, I forgot to do one thing. Uh, so this is important, right? So after the install, uh, the Swarm cluster is set up. And when you set up Swarm cluster, it's, it's like a cluster of hosts. You don't talk to one particular host, right? So you have to set up the Docker host variable which actually sets up that, uh, uh, and, then you can and then you can start running commands. So let me just make this slightly smaller. This is clear enough, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so I have set the Docker host variable to point to the Swarm cluster, not to a single host. And I did Docker info, which shows the number of nodes, two nodes, node three and node four. And then now I'm ready to uh, run the application. Right? All right, sorry. I think there is a <laughs> few things that I have done in the past that are causing the problems. Yeah. OK. So I'm going, trying to clean up a few things and then start from the beginning. OK, cool. So that was the remnant of my previous uh, demo <laughs> that I've been practicing. Uh, and that's good. So this is live, right? I want to show you guys that when you're running actually applications, so all these policies get created dynamically. right? It's not like I 
create policy first and then the application. It's actually the, the other way around. I deploy the application, and Conti will automatically create the rules and maybe program ACI if you're using ACI, and all that is set up automatically. So what I've done is uh, I just ran Conti Compose. So ignore this part. We don't have DNS set up in this environment for the demo environment. Uh, but we have started web and Redis containers. So if I do Docker PS, now you can see the web image and Redis image, the two containers that we have in this application. And, and the two containers are named example web one and example Redis one. Right? So, but I, have, I haven't talked about policy. Right? I, didn't, I didn't do anything with the policy. Right? Because I am a developer and I just ran the application. But what is the policy in the back end? Right? So that is where this ops.json file comes in. So Conti Compose expects this JSON file to be in the same directory, and we already put it there. And you can specify different policies. Uh, and the syntax is not that important, but the key part is that you can specify different users, role-based access control. Right? If you are the admin, you have access to all policies. When you are running, you as an admin, when you're running the application. Uh, but if you are a user, like a developer running in Vagrant environment and using the Vagrant username, then you only have, so the default network policy is trust app. And the default network is name is dev. Right? So what is trust app? Right? So trust app is actually just only one rule that says that permit app. This is, what that means is that within a tenant, the app can only talk to the database. Right? So let's say two people uh, ran the same application. And they have two uh, web and database, web and database. Right? But you want to make sure that web one talks to only database one, and web two talks to database two, not, and you can't interact with each other. So that's what this is saying. And you can set other policies as well, which I'll get to in a minute. Yeah. All right. So, so these are the policies. Now let's verify actually these policies are working or not. Right? So, so before that, I want to actually get the IP address of both of um, the Redis and web. OK. So also notice that so the Redis uh, container has this IP address. And this comes from the subnet prefix that we have provided earlier. Right? And Conti will take care of programming like VXLAN, and as well as like if you have set up it, set it up with ACI, it would program the ACI as well, and all of that to make sure that this IP address is visible in the network. Right. Right. So now, yeah. so I am logging into the my container. So Docker exec again, some of you might be familiar, where you are just logging into this container, and then. This is the web one, the web tier of the, the application. And if we want to verify that, I can actually access Redis container, right? So, six, three, eight, zero. How many of you are familiar with Netcat, NC? Netcat, uh, yeah. So Netcat or NC is a, uh, is a command I'm going to use. It's a utility to like do all kinds of like funky network stuff, like test your network, check if your ports are open, and many other things like traffic inspection and so on. So this one is very simple command. It's actually like you have a timeout of one second to connect to these ports, and then connect to this IP address and the ports, and see if they are if they they are actually available from this container, right? So so you see that they are actually in reverse order. But you see that only 6379 is open for this container. Uh, remember that like we have said the policy earlier, right? that only web one can talk to data, uh, database one. And only this port is accessible. Everything else are not accessible. Right? So this is a very simple policy where you are saying that, hey, only in, within a tenant, only the web tier can talk to the database tier. Right? All right, any questions, comments? All right. So that is the very simple example. So let's get a little more uh, stuff going. So before that, let me stop the application. And I'm going to skip the scaling part, because I want to show you another network. 
So, so I created dev network earlier, right? With the 10, 11, 10 as the prefix. Now I want to create a new network called test. Right? Okay. So I have three networks now. There is a default network that always gets created when you start uh, contiv. Let's see, ignore that for, a, for this demo. So I created the test just now, and it has a different prefix. Now, I want to move my application to this network. Well, how do I do it? Right? Today, like, if you want to do that, you will have to like, do a series of Docker commands in, with Docker or Kubernetes to make sure that all your containers move to this network, apply the policies, and so on. But with Conti, it's as simple as saying this. That's it. So the application is running and was running in dev. You just want to move it to test. Then just say it's test, right? So let's run that. OK. And then let's inspect the container to see the IP address. All right. Okay. So notice that this is this network is a 10.22 network, which is the dev network. Oh, sorry, test network. Okay. So it's as simple as that. Like you stop the container, restart it, and then it's in a different network. And different set of policies are applied as well. Uh, so the test network again has like different policies set up. And you can uh, modify them and specify what policies to be applied to what network as well. All right. So we did that. And we went through. I don't have to show this to you again. I mean, it, it has the same purpose that you go to the web tier. And then if you try to talk to database tier, only this port is open. Um, so I'm going to skip that so that we can go to the next more interesting one. All right. Now, all this is great, uh, but I want to override the policy. Right? Now, remember that even if I being developer, I cannot just override anything I like. Uh, only the policies that admin has allowed me, I can do that. So, so how do you specify that? Like, Let's say right here, so me as a vagrant developer, developer user, I have access to trust. Redis and web, right? So I can only use those three policies in my application. Right? So so far we have been using this trust app policy, which permits only the 6379 port, right? But I want to change it to a new policy that would allow me to open 6379, 6378, and 6377. Just two more ports I want, right? So let's apply that policy. So what I did here is, again, it's super simple. right? I applied a label to this tier and then said that, hey, I want to add this as my extra policy that I want to apply to my application. And, and then I'm ready to go. Right? All right. So we'll run the same command as earlier, where I'm logging into my web tier. And then run the same netcat command, right? Oh. I think uh, I need to get the IP address. One second. So I need to get the IP address of my Redis uh, container, and. So I'm back to my web container, I, and I want to run the netcat command, where I want to connect to my Redis between the ports 6375 to 6380. Right? Okay. So again, 6379 is open, 
because database is exposing uh, the service on that port. And 7, 5, 7, 6, and 8, 0 time con timed out, right? Because you're not able to access. But the other two ports are actually available to this, this container. They're not showing up here because there is no service running on that, app, on that port. But earlier, these ports were blocked. But now you can access those ports. Uh, so it's a simple example of like how you can apply an override policy for a specific network or specific application that you're running. Okay. Comments, questions? Ben? All right. So this I already explained, but if going through the same, the reason this worked is that is because we have specified that the vagrant user can use the Redis default policy, and you just apply that in your composition file, and then uh, then you can start your app. Okay. So all this is good. So let me stop the app. So how do I go to production? You guys should now should be able to answer this. How do I move my application to production? Anyone? Exactly, yeah. Change the network label to production. That's it. But I, as a developer, can I do this? Can I do it? What do you think will happen? Can a, can a developer move to production directly? Well, that's up to you guys. Right? So, so you as the admin, if you decided that, hey, developer can go to production by just changing a label, yes, you should allow that. But if not, let's see what happens. In fact, I, I as a developer, I am not the user vagrant. He's not allowed to run apps in, in production. Right? So it's not just about like changing a label and then letting people lose, right? It's about applying the right policy in the back end, controlling it in the back end, while giving full flexibility for the developers. So let's say the application is ready for production. Of course, you'll go and say that, hey, now Dev Sally can run this app in production. And then you just change your policy in the back end, right? So let's do that. Okay, so so Sally, or in this case, Vagrant user, has test and dev earlier, but we are going to add production. Yeah, but problem is that we didn't create any production network yet, right? So. Let's do that, right? So, um, so we have three networks now, dev, test, and production. And I have given, I as an admin has given access to the developer that, hey, you can go to production now because your app is ready to go into production. And then now the application is running in production network. Right? So let's, let's very quickly inspect the container to see the IP address. And now you see the network prefix is 1033, right? Dev was 1011, test was 10 into 22, and production is 1033. Right. Right. So unless the user has access to production network, this wouldn't be allowed. But we modified the policy to allow the user to run in production. Right. So this basically explains all that stuff. Right. So, so far we've been dealing with networks, right? Uh, but creating a network for de desk, dev, production, and more it becomes complicated over time. Uh, you want to deal with a group of users as a tenant, right? So you want to say that my engineering tenant has certain policies, or my finance developers are, uh, have certain policies, and so on. So that is where the tenant concept comes in. Uh, and, and it's very similar to how ACS tenant works. That you specify a tenant, let's say blue or green, and then you can create networks within that tenant. And when you say when you create the compose file, you specify the tenant as blue or green and so on. Right? Or you can enforce this automatically from, from the role-based access control as well. 
end, right? So I'm going to skip that part because it just shows that you can actually create networks within the tenants, which looks exactly like the what I showed, except that it's it's in different networks. Okay. So we have already set up the cluster of nodes, like we already have the swarm cluster, and in this example, it was three nodes, but we have we used two nodes, and finally I want to sh show the scaling part, right? All right, so. So what this is doing is that, uh, so in, in uh, using Compose, you can scale any of the tiers independent of the other tiers. So I, what I did is just did is that scale the web tier to five instances. Earlier, we had only one instance talking to the database. Right? So if I go and check, now I have five instances of web. Right? So suddenly, you have more containers. but from an administration point of view, you have to do nothing. The policy remains exactly the same across all these containers, and it will be enforced as well. Uh, remember that we are in production network, so of whatever production network policies you have set up, those are the ones applied. And all these things will get IP addresses in the production network as well. Like if you, we can locate a couple of them. They'll all have 1033 prefix as the uh, IP address. Okay. All right. And we can verify that actually we can reach from any of these containers. The policy is applied. Uh, so let's say. So I'm going to get my Redis container IP address, and let's say I log into any of these. Let me go to this one, Web3. And then run the, run the netcat command. Right? And then we verify that only 6379 is open. So irrespective of number of containers developer spins up, the policy remains the same. Because you don't want to be creating one policy per container. Uh, it's, a, it's a group of containers. And Again, if you're familiar with ACI, it's the group-based policy that makes this magic work. It makes it much easier to manage your policies and your tenants. Okay. All right. Oh, OK, this final one is actually cool. So this is the final part of the demo. Uh, so remember that I told you earlier that, hey, you can actually create two copies of the same app, right? So. So far, we have one copy that is running in the production network, and it's called example. Now, I, I can run another copy of the test. Actually, let me name it something else. Right? Yeah. right. So let's say we, cop we create a new application, same compose file, but it is called with a different name. So. So if you run Docker PS, we will actually sh see right at the top the new containers that are created. Remember that we, ha we scaled the earlier app. It had five web containers and one Redis database. Now we have a new application that has only two containers. And I call it Mike's copy. Like the admin, let's say, created that copy. Right? Now these two are fully isolated. So I cannot actually go from web one of Mike's copy to Redis off like the example one. Right? Let's. Right, so this is the IP address. And I can go into. Web one of the new application that we just created. And let's say I run the netcat utility again. and check for which ports are open or accessible from this container. Right? And I shouldn't be able to access any of the ports, because I being this is a different application does not have access to the earlier application we deployed, even though they are in the same network. Right? So you get timed out from all, for all of the ports. Uh, the reason is that these two are different apps. 
And the original policy that we have set is that each app is isolated from the other app. Right? And you could allow that if you want to. Uh, again, it's, it's a matter of like what the administrators want to do and how you want to manage the policy. All right? Cool. I think that brings me to the end of the demo. In fact, pretty much everything worked. Any comments, questions? So just to quickly summarize, right? So you can follow this tutorial very easily. The, the tutorial, the only part I would say, actually, just very quickly is that the step one, actually, you should use this install quick start. Uh, so we're going to get it updated. Uh, this is slightly newer set of instructions where you can go to Contu install quick start guide and then follow this. Uh, then you can follow the rest of the from step two. Only step one, you have to follow that install guide. But after that, you can follow all these different steps. So what we have done to summarize, right? Uh, you can create a network very easily, specify the like the subnet prefix, and then you can specify gateway or like in ACI mode, you can do other things, all of that. And then use that network in developer compose files. So I, as an IT admin, create the network, tell the developer that, hey, you have access to dev network. Go and use it in your compose files. And we have seen it multiple times, right? All the developer has to do is put that label net colon dev. And when, you, when you're ready to move that application from dev to test, it's as simple as like changing the tag right? or the label, net to net colon to test. Now, that's the first part. The second part is that role-based access control. So as an admin, I can fully control what a user can do, what networks they can connect to, what kind of ports they can open, uh, what kind of apps they can deploy. Like if they deploy two apps, are they isolated from each other or not? You can control that. And the third thing we did is, uh, or actually there is more things, but third thing we did is you can scale the application. Developer can scale the application, but the policies apply remain the same. And, and Conti makes sure that no matter how many containers are spun up, no matter which host they are running on, the policy is enforced. Right? And what else we did? So th we talked about different po networks and policies. Scaling as well. And you can change the network. Yeah, and specifying an override policy also. Uh, so it's not just about like you have to attach all policies to a network. You can once in a while, let's say you want to override a policy, then you can uh, specify that in the compose file and then let that policy be applied. Uh, again, the, as an admin, you can control whether someone can override or not. Uh, so that gives you full flexibility. All right. So we, I mentioned this already, role-based access control. And tenants, right? So you can specify multiple tenants where uh, you are not working at the network level, because each tenant can have multiple networks, but at the tenant level, and then specify policies for tenants as a group. Uh, that makes it super easy for like just deploy all the applications and containers in, in a tenant's environment, and then apply the policy and get it applied to all the containers in for that tenant. Okay. All right. And then you can do this in, I showed Docker Swarm, but this will work for Kubernetes as well, and uh, Kubernetes cluster, and it will, the policy would get applied across the cluster as well. All right. I think that's about it. Right. So that's it. Um, so that's all I have in terms of the demo. I'm happy to answer any questions, comments. Uh, the key point I want to make is that it's super easy to set up those policies and apply them for containers. And, and the changing of like the application from test, dev, and production, we did it in less than like half an hour. Right? There are no magic like, network commands. It's all driven through Contiv. And Contiv will program the switches. Or in, in this case, we use VXLAN, just VMs. Uh, it will program the ACI and so on. Oh. Questions? No? All right. OK, thank you. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs>
So I'm here till Friday and happy to chat also. Like my contact information is on the uh, session page and I can talk as well. Thank you.